The Torian was a safe place for settlers during attacks. These buildings dotted the New Mexico landscape and were essential to any town. The grounds across from it was the secret location of Billy the Kid's meeting with Governor Lou Wallace. On a quiet stretch of Route 380 is the Billy the Kid Trail. It passes through the heart of Lincoln, once called the most dangerous street in America, now slices through a peaceful neighborhood with friendly folks and museums. Lawlessness was carried out nearby on April 1st of 1878, as the regulators gunned down Sheriff William Brady and Deputy George Hinman on this spot. Billy the Kid and his pals hid behind a wall near John Tunstall's store. James Dolan, Lawrence Murphy, and John Riley ruled the town with their dry goods store, called The House. But an Englishman named John Tunstall came to town in 1876, wanting to niche out his fortunes as a rancher and store owner with his friend and attorney, Alexander McSween. Cattleman John Chisholm would fund their operations. The two sides had various people in their pockets. The Dolan faction made friends with Brady and the Jesse Evans gang, while Tunstall and McSween had the regulators. On February 18, 1878, Tunstall was murdered by the Jesse Evans gang, a directive of the Santa Fe Ring, a powerful political entity that protected their vested interests in the state. It was corruption that really killed Tunstall, as he started to gain an edge over the so-called house. Tunstall and McSween are buried behind the store. John Chisholm's success in cattle a year earlier marked him as a target of the Santa Fe Ring. A brief range war ensued, killing two. Now this area sits atop the McSween home that was decimated when the regulars made a final stand on July 19, 1878, against Dolan Sheriff George Pepin and his men. The house was caught fire and the regulators were forced to flee as McSween and three others lost their life. Ironically, a butcher shop was put in its place. Originally part of the McSween property, the Dr. Watson house was also a drugstore in the early 1900s. After Tunstall and Brady, violence escalated for months in the Battle of Lincoln. A five-day shootout where Dolan roosted snipers in the Torian and the standoff, as mentioned earlier, took place, leading the regulators to run. Soon, Pat Garrett was named the county sheriff with his primary goal to hunt down the kid and the regulators who rode with him. Dr. Wood's Annex was built in 1886 and thought to be the first a furniture store, then later home to the local newspaper, The Independent. Interestingly, it also served as a movie house in the 1920s. Many of the buildings here had elements of thick adobe under the wood. Lincoln is wedged between New Mexico's Sacramento and Capitan Mountains. In the mid-1800s, Mexican families settled in what they called the Place by the Pretty River. With increased violence, the town needed a doctor, but the doctor, for it is named, didn't practice until the 1920s. In the early days, would have called on 29-year-old Dr. Taylor Ely, who was in Lincoln during the battle. Ely was said to have even officiated at Tunstall's funeral. Unfortunately, that decision and his friendship with McSween pitted him against the Dolan's faction. He was also a witness in the murder of Brady, but chose to instead go to the aid of a regulator named Jim French. The church was originally one of the first schoolhouses. They may have learned about the Mescalero Apache that called the Lincoln area and other parts of the Southwest their homeland. These warriors defended it bravely and struck fear into the settlers, causing the government to build a line of forts, including nearby Fort Stanton. The ruins are from a store, livery stables, and stage shop operated by John Whelan. Well after the Lincoln County War, the Aragon family ran it as a general mercantile in the 1900s. On the opposite side of the road, you can see the house of Pat Garrett's deputy, James Brent. He was sheriff in his own right and lived to age 81. Behind the ruins is the Wortley House, built in 1874 and once owned by Pat Garrett. 
It is famously known as the location where Deputy Bob Ollinger took his last meal. On April 28, 1881, while the kid was in prison and awaiting execution, Garrett left town presumably to get lumber to construct a gallows. Ollinger took several prisoners for a meal at the Wortley. The kid was left behind for fear of him trying to escape. For this reason, the kid's meals were delivered to his chained-up location in the L.G. Murphy Company headquarters. He was literally locked up in Murphy's room. The building, not so coincidentally, also acted as a new courthouse. Apparently, Bell had taken the kid to the outhouse, where the kid notably freed one of his hands. Upon climbing the courthouse stairs, the kid wrestled with Bell and his gun, and it discharged. Bell made it out the back door, but died soon after. Olinger heard the gunshots and thought Deputy Bell had killed the kid. In a rush, he ran into the street and was shouted at from a second-story courthouse window. But the kid blasted him dead, having stolen a shotgun from the armory next door. As we come upon the courthouse, we pass the Bank Exchange Saloon, constructed in 1885. The La Palama Bar stood beside it. The Murphy Dolan store was fully converted into a courthouse in 1881, and here in April, the kid made his final escape, shooting Bell on the staircase in Ollinger from the northeast window. The corrupt Santa Fe ring fell to with the attention of the kid, the Lincoln County War, and eventually statehood in 1912. Outside seeing this beautifully preserved town is Old Lincoln Days, held in August, where a reenactment portrays the kid's escape. The Wardley now is a historic bed and breakfast where one can absorb all the history and sleep soundly to a night sky full of stars. This is Biographies of the West. My name is Lauren Morgan Richards. Until next time.